There are some features of Salesforce.com that are not always implemented uh, with every single customer. And some of these little features are really nice ways to maximize your usage of Salesforce.com. I'm going to walk through five things that I think might be underutilized and yet really help on a day-to-day -day basis. The first one is the idea of tagging. Now, you may be familiar with Chatter and how you can collaborate or perhaps if you uh, are familiar with creating your own list views, you can go in and create list views for your sales reps or customer service reps, uh, create your own views, etc. But oftentimes, you might want to create your own set of tags that are going to allow you to know which accounts you want to target. You might not want to create a custom field for that, you just want to tag it. So I'm going to jump into one of my accounts here for Datamart, and I'll be able to see on the right here that I can add a tag. Now I do have the ability to create my own personal tag, so I'm going to call this one uh, my, uh, my strategic account and only I will see that this is tagged and I can also create public tags to say this is a, uh, you know, a, top, uh, a top 10 account. Now once I've created these tags, I can now go in and mark any one of my uh, accounts in any way that I would like. If I want to go in and see, well, which ones have I marked as a strategic account, I simply click on that tag and I can see that I've marked Datamart as one of my strategic accounts. I can now, of course, go in and remove this tag if I wish. I can also go into my sidebar and see which recent tags I've been using, so top 10 or strategic accounts. Again, differentiating between a personal or a public tag that I can put on any object within Salesforce. I can also go in and have a look at my tag usage, and this will give me an idea of how many tags I have. So obviously we can tag up to 500 personal or 5,000, uh, sorry, uh, 5,000 uh, applications. Uh, if I want to clean this up, again, of course, I can just delete it manually, or I can go into my setup area, and under tags, I can go into personal tag cleanup and actually remove anything based on certain criteria. So the ability to tag your accounts, contacts, leads, cases, or any custom object is going to allow you to be able to identify those top key accounts more readily. The second thing I'd like to cover is the idea of content delivery. If you're familiar with the, uh, the workspaces and the content management uh, system within Salesforce, You'll probably be uh, familiar with the fact that you can uh, go through these different workspaces, set them up for internal versus external users. But rather than if we go in, for example, to my sales content here, and uh, rather than taking a large PowerPoint presentation and emailing it off or using an FTP, we can actually use content to deliver this directly to your customers. Now, whether this piece of content is, uh, you know, 50k in size or even 500 megs, you're going to be able to deliver this to your customer simply by hitting the deliver content button. There's a few things to bear in mind. Right now I'm choosing a PowerPoint. So I'm going to allow the recipients to view this in the browser. I can allow them to download this as an original document, but if I don't want them to modify that information, I can of course remove that ability. I'll be notified when this has been viewed. I can remove uh, access to this content and, of course, make it password protected. So if I want to deliver a single piece or even a content pack, I can do so. If you have any questions, simply hit help for this page. So now that I'm ready to deliver this particular piece of industry training out to uh, my customer, I can tie it into an account, a contact, really anything within Salesforce, and Salesforce will create a mini web page that I can now preview to see what it is that I'm going to send out to my customer. So now I'm able to see this piece of content as my customer will see it. There's the ability to download only as a PDF because I restricted the ability to download as a PowerPoint. I can now browse through this and see exactly what my customer is going to see without having to download and waste very valuable bandwidth. When I'm ready, simply copy the link, send it out to my customer, and I can view when they have uh, seen this document, when they've opened it, how many times they've opened it, and then of course I'll be able to see the amount of downloads of this particular content. The third area I'd like to cover is really the idea of delivering reports out to, well, anybody within your organization. If I wanted to have an, uh, a, 
uh, deal here where I'm looking at my biggest open deals and I'd like to see all of these deals that I'm working on but as an executive I really don't want to go and log into Salesforce on a daily basis or a weekly basis I have better things to do so I'm going to uh, set this up to schedule this report to be run and delivered to either myself or to anybody else within my organization so I can set this up for individual users or groups of users I can determine exactly who of all my internal users I would like to send this out to. Then I can determine the frequency. Do I want this delivered daily, perhaps weekly, or even delivered monthly? And I can determine which day of the month I would like to have this delivered on. I can determine the start and end date for this delivery so we don't have to have it running all the time. And then I can determine my preferred start time when I would like to have this delivered out and I can have this job queued and ready to be delivered. The ability to schedule and deliver these reports really will eliminate the amount of time you might spend, uh, you know, four or five hours on a Friday collating reports and delivering them up the chain. You can simply have that one report delivered to the executive you need it delivered to at the time you need that report delivered. The fourth thing that I'd like to cover off is, uh, again, from a reporting standpoint, the ability to take these dashboards and collaborate around them. So rather than using your dashboards as purely a view only, I can actually use Chatter to collaborate around my various different dashboards. If I wanted to see, for example, uh, we'll just switch our view here for a moment to, uh, to a, a wider array of dashboards and have a look at perhaps our sales executive dashboard so I can see all of the very salient pieces of information I need to download. Now I'd like to track my sales activity and you'll notice there's a little arrow next to the dashboard here where I can go in and either post a snapshot to the dashboard feed or I can actually post a snapshot to the user. I can see Cindy for example here doesn't appear to have a lot of activity so maybe I'd like to post a snapshot of this to, uh, to Cindy within my organization and I'll post that out to Cin Cindy and just say um, you know looks uh, like activity is low what's going on and I can now post this right to Cindy's profile and we can collaborate around that particular dashboard find out what's going on so I can then of course follow this dashboard I can see the chatter that's happening around here there's no current updates but the ability to tie chatter into more than just accounts contacts opportunities but actually be able to see what's happening on a particular users feed so now if I want to go in and, uh, and have a look for uh, Cindy, for example, I'll see posted to her chatter feed that we're going to have a discussion around that particular dashboard. And I know that the collaborative side of Salesforce is really being used, especially when it comes to tagging into uh, our dashboard component. The last piece is the ability to do a mass stay in contact with your accounts and contacts. And the way Salesforce does this, I can go either to my accounts or contacts tab scroll down and I can see here that we have the mass stay in touch. And what this is going to allow me to do is to create list views of my contacts. For example, I can go in and look at all contacts or maybe stale contacts, people that haven't had activity in a certain amount of time. Or maybe if I've created a list view of uh, bounced emails or, or ways uh, that I, I need to further contact my, uh, my contacts and accounts, I can create any kind of list view that I'd like. I'm going to select all of my contacts and hit go. What this is going to allow me to do is to send out an email to a list, whatever that view may be for my customers, and keep in touch with them through an automated email. Out of the box, there's going to be certain fields that we're going to be tracking. So when I go in to look at the, uh, the stay in touch that I'll send out to the customer, we'll see that I'm sending this out to 98 people. And here's the template that's going to be used. So it'll take the contact first name, we want to update that email address. I can see that here's the current information I have for you. So now I can go ahead and send that out to my list of 98 customers. And of course, it's going to store activities for each one of our contacts that we're sending out so that we know we've sent this mass stay in touch to them. Once that's complete, I can hit finished and I'll be able to see that I do have my mass stay in touch that's been delivered to me. So I can see here's that list, I'm updating that box. Your customer can go ahead and say, yeah, I'd like to, uh, to update that information. I can now go in as the customer 
update my personal information for you. So, Tammy Baxter, here's all of my information. Maybe change the mailing city to Toronto. Um, just change a little bit of information here. And I can also send a personal note. When I'm ready to send that out, we can update that information. It's been sent back to me at my email address. So now when we go back in to, uh, to look at our contact, Tammy Baxter, we'll be able to see that the information has been updated and that Tammy now has uh, updated her information. And of course, in the activity history, I can see that we did send out that mass email stay in touch. So these are just five things that you may not be using all the time with Salesforce that might help you in your uh, implementation and to increase that productivity with your sales reps.